question going to those two. Killer Mike. Sweet. It's too late. You can't tell me dreams come true. It is a sweep. It is a sweep. It is a sweep. <laughs> that was hip hop artist and political activist Killer Mike after picking up his third Grammy last week for his latest album, Michael. And he joins us live right now. Please welcome Killer Mike. I didn't wear a shirt with a collar. Oh, yeah. I dressed like a rapper this morning. <laughs> oh, you look great. I like Thank it. You. Rapping's been good. Yeah, that I, was I, a yeah. sweep. Yeah, it was a sweep for Atlanta, man. And, yeah. you know, it was good to bring it home. I felt like the Braves you know, I'm in the 90s. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, Usher. Yeah, Usher, man. Killed the shots out to Usher, as we yeah. pronounce it. <laughs> Not even Atlanta. Exactly. I heard you were going to be here. I wanted to know if I need to bring a joiner. Oh, now. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> This is, what we're, okay, this is what he's referencing. We were on <laughs> Bill Maher together, mm -hmm. and that night, everybody pulled out a joint and lit up except yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, you did. Because I actually don't like it. Because yeah. I, like I said to you then, I, I don't like drugs that give me the munchies. Yeah. I don't need that. Well, I got, I got, a, I got a cure. My, my wife will just send you some edibles. It kills you. <laughs> two birds and one stone. How y'all doing? If Donald Trump wins, I might take you up on that. <laughs> Donald Trump wins, he might need something harder than marijuana. <laughs> With that, on that note. Well, no, go ahead, y'all. I mean, you just ran through my whole my question, so <laughs> I, I'm just kind of sitting here with my mouth open. But congratulations. Thank you so much. You know, it was nice to see you, man. It's good to be back. It's Glad good to you. have you here. Oh man, shouts out to Joy. I hate she missed it, but um, yeah. Good friend of mine, Scott Carter. We've both worked together, mm -hmm. and I have a television show called Love and Respect. And Scott um, co-created the show with me, and we'll be back for a third season. And hopefully, I get a chance to interview you guys. Definitely. I'd love to do that. Yeah. You can count on it. Yeah. You can count on it. So we heard you say in the clip you were accepting your third award in the evening. We kind of just mentioned that, but you're never too old. No, it's never too old nor too late. What was on your mind when you said that for people to hear? I mean, it was a, at first, I was just, let me give you the day. I'm a car guy, so I, I woke up to, to a 80... $100,000 Regal, to my favorite car, Grand National. Oh. It was built by uh, Ron Bard of Atlanta and Mike Musto and Soupy. So I wake up to this beautiful, this beautiful woman. I wake up to my wife. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then I, I'm excited about this beautiful car. Then I get this beautiful chain from my jeweler. I mean, what bracelet shots out the stacks. And everything is, everything is amazing. And then I hear my name called the first time, and I'm appreciative. Then I hear it's called the second time. They tell me I'm about to walk this in on them. I was like, I'm about to get another one? And... I know, okay, I got two. And when I got the second one, I knew the third one was coming. And the third one was the one I really wanted. It was Rap Album right. of the Year. Of the year. Wow. Yeah, yeah and um, I, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> now, I'm telling people not to, not to stop dreaming. Yeah. No, you cannot stop Anything dreaming. Anything is possible. You have to. You have to. You, you, you have to keep whatever 9-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old is in your head, keep that child alive. No, no matter what you see in the mirror, you're still that child. And you, your imagination has to be bigger than the room, bigger than the building, bigger than the sky. Because if you keep the imagination alive, everything is possible. That's right. When you limit your imagination, nothing becomes as possible right. as, you, as it could be. So, now, yeah. You know, um, I'm a former prosecutor. Yeah. And there were some other headlines that came out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was very upset about it. Yeah. Because it was unnecessary. Uh -huh. And you don't do that on that special night, yeah. especially for what I read about. Yeah. So what I'm going to ask you is, um, there was an incident at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. It led to you being taken out in handcuffs and arrested. That was wrong. Obviously, it's an ongoing legal matter, so I don't know how much you can say about it. Well, as a prosecutor, you know I can't say it. You can't say much. <laughs> <laughs> but can you just give us some sort of description, because people are no, Say, just, they're I, talking too much. I think about the backstage it. was overcrowded. I think the winners were exuberant. And I think security got a little overzealous, and that's all. I, it's all, you know, I, it's water under the bridge for me. Yeah. I like to say all of my heroes have been in handcuffs: Malcolm, Martin, Mandela, <laughs> Meg. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't, I, 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 
I, I walked out with the same dignity and respect that I walked Good. in with. And I, I would just, I would implore people to just take that from it. Don't, don't dwell on the bad stuff. And the next morning, um, I spent three hours kind of by myself. You know, you're waiting. Um, and the police say, oh my God, we've never gotten this many phone calls. People won't have to go to protest. We will have to move you. <laughs> They're panicked and I'm just kind of sitting there and I begin to invoke thanks. I thank God for bringing me where I was. I thank God for putting me in a space, believe it or not, by myself. Mm -hmm. And I got an opportunity to invoke the spirit of my mom and my grandmother and let them know what had happened and thank them. And the very next morning, well, I got out that night. I, w I walked out to my wife in the rain. It was like a romance movie. It was dope. <laughs> and, and my manager, um, and then we went to party. We went to party at Loma Vista, shots out. We had a party and the next morning I woke up to my son's mother yes. saying you have to come home mm -hmm. because Pony Boy has a kidney. He, they have a kidney for him and we have to get him now. And I just thank God. And I, that was your, your, your 21 year old son yeah. who's waited three, three years, years yeah. for this transplant. So what was it like getting that call and how's he doing now? Uh, after we, his mom was hyperventilating, she was so excited. And um, you know, baby dad, baby mom relationships can get tumultuous over the years. Yeah. And Lord knows when we were young, we could fight like cats and dogs. But uh, over the past five, six years, we have been just locked in as a team, as a total team around him and his health. So she was crying, I was crying, my wife was crying yeah. in tears of joy. And we, um, we rushed to get back to Atlanta as soon as possible. By the time we got there, he was out of surgery and he was mad at the team. He had reported it because he's a very private kid. Oh, right. So I called him and asked him, "Could I talk about it?" Day he said, "Yeah, man. Yeah, you could. Aww. You could tell." He said, "Tell y'all hi." So, yeah. so we're all rooting for him. It's remarkable, man. And that that time you spend in that jail cell was God saying to you, "Yeah, listen, you got all of this, but don't forget." Yep. This is always here. Keep Absolutely. your eye on the prize. My, my grandmother told me, the Lord has set you down. Mm -hmm. And you, you never know what that means That's until right. you sit down. Yeah. And, then you, and then it's just like you in a tuxedo and God. And you're like, well, damn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what my grandmother was talking about. You're equally uh, well known for being a political activist on top of your music. And you were a campaign surrogate for Bernie Sanders. Oh, you campaigned for your home state Democratic senators, Raphael Warnock and John, and John Ossoff. Ossoff yep. Yeah. And um, you got some attention recently for being somewhat critical of President Biden saying you weren't ready to endorse him yet. What's your hold up there? What's my hold up? Well, first of all, I think everyone should focus on hyper local. We, we get caught up yeah. in the soap opera of federal elections, and that's fine. But if you are concerned with the federal election, you don't know who your city council or your wardsman is, right. you don't know who your mayor is, and you're not have you don't have a good list of state representatives or governor, then you're just a part of whoever wow. wins the Super Bowl yeah, or fanfare. Right. So my most important election is going to be in about a year and a half for who's my mayor going to be. I think that Andre mm -hmm. Dickens is doing a great job around housing in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I don't want that to be lost. Even though we have a Republican governor, mm -hmm. Brian Kemp, I have a good relationship with him. I like what he's done in terms of Georgia business. We've been leading business amongst all states for the last 10 years, and he brought back the Hope Scholarship and expanded it. So if you're a kid in Georgia, you're poor, you got to be average, you can go to college for free or trade school. So in my community, oh, wow. girls Girls are going to college, but boys don't have anywhere to go and they're not choosing to. In my community, I have a push for trades. That's why I support organizations like Georgia Youth Build. I support organizations like um, Next Level Boys Academy because they, uh, they usher our boys. I need my daughters to be able to marry somebody. Right. <laughs> so, and, and even in that case, I, I have said, okay, this governor's doing a good job. In terms of nationally, I'm just kind of doing what my grandfather said, staying out of white folks' business and watching what happens. <laughs> you know, I'm going to see what happens. If there's a candidate that pops up around September, October, that needs a push that's really, and policy-wise is good for us, going to jump up. But for right now, I just don't want to be involved in the soap opera because I'm much too concerned about what's going on in Atlanta on a hyper-local level. That's so well, you, you lost me a little bit with your support of Kemp, but let me, let me tell you this. No, not support of Kemp. Some of that's, policies, that's, policies, I mean, yeah. it's, and that's some misinformation. I, you cannot like me, but don't lie on me. I saw someone I really respect, a black woman who's a commentator. So you don't and support she, him. And you she like said, his policies. Well, I support some the, specific ones I, named. Beyond it, he's the governor of my state, so I have to be involved with him. Because well, I can't divorce myself, but let me say this. If you criticize someone, don't lie. Yes. Don't say I didn't support Abrams, because I did. Mm -hmm. Don't say that I didn't, don't support Democrats, because I've helped get three Democratic mayors elected, I've helped get two state representatives elected. But if someone is in the king's seat, I'm not going to not have dinner with the king on the behalf of my people. Well, I have to do that. Let me just point some of Biden's achievements out for the black community, mm -hmm. right? The lowest black unemployment rate on record, lowest gap between black and white unemployment on record. You gotta black, give them a clap. Black yeah. wealth is up by <laughs> black wealth is up by 60 percent relative to pre-pandemic, the largest increase on record. Has helped eight million renters and their families stay in their home, over 40 percent of whom were black, and the largest effects in a majority black neighborhoods like yours. Nope. Delivered investment of over seven billion to support HBCUs. 
put $1 billion into Head Start. Whoopi's going to like that. A program where more than 28% of children and pregnant women who benefit um, uh, and identify as black. Yep. So those are Biden's yep. accomplishments in the black community. Okay? Yeah. That was a white woman saying that too now. Yeah. <laughs> That's out. That's an ally. <laughs> right? so I, so I, so and Katanji. So, so I hope you'll consider that. But some polls are suggesting that there's been a rise in black voters supporting yeah. Trump. Do you believe these polls and what policies that are important to black men are being addressed by the GOP? Well, you I don't. Really I, have a short time to answer that. Yeah, oh, I'll, give, I'll give you this. I'll give the Democrats this. Black people, especially black men in the South, are afraid. Mm -hmm. um, they have concerns around immigration. They have concerns around gun control. Mm -hmm. They have concerns around wealth building. So if I was the Democrats, I'd try to speak directly to that base. You guys already have their ear. Most of them have voted for you all their lives. Mm -hmm. So that doorway is still open for you guys to walk in and engage. I also like to thank Biden for engaging and bringing on to his administration. Keisha Lance Bottoms. Yes. I think she's excellent. I'd like to also encourage Georgians to follow Democrats like Kasim Reed, mm -hmm. like Andre Dickens, um, like Bill Campbell, and see where they're going. Where are the Democrats you support in your state pivoting to and follow the people you like? Yes. Make sure that you get out and vote in the local elections. I can't, we can't, we can't. You gotta do it. Our thanks to Killer Mike, his latest album, Michael, is available right now.